Welcome to a code report algorithms video. In this video, we're going to be covering three algorithms from the STL algorithm library, std binary search, std lower bound, and std upper bound. Starting with std binary search, an algorithm that I'm sure everyone has heard of. This is an algorithm with logarithmic time complexity O of log n that will return true if the value searched for exists in the sorted sequence, or at least partitioned with respect to the value searched for, meaning that we don't actually need our whole sequence to be sorted as long as it is partitioned with respect to the value we're searching for. Binary search will still work. So this is a very simple example. We just have a vector of integers uh, initialized using an initializer list and we call binary search. The first two parameters are iterators that are pointing to the begin and the end of the range that we want to search in. And the third parameter is just the parameter we are looking for. So on our, on our second line here, uh, the three exists in our vector. So we're going to output found because this function will return tr true. And on our third line, uh, because we're searching for four, which doesn't exist in our vector, uh, binary search will return false and we will output not found. And note that there's also a second version of this function where as a fourth parameter you can pass a comparator that's different than the default. So the default is less uh, and you can overload this with either uh, a lambda or some other comparator defined in a, another library. So greater is defined in the functional library. And so you can see here, um, you should always be using a comparator that was used to sort your vector. So this one's already sorted, but it's uh, in reverse of the default sorted order. And uh, so this will just work the same way. The second line uh, will return found, and the last line searching for four, which doesn't exist, will return not found. For std lower bound, this is an algorithm with logarithmic time complexity O of log n that will return an iterator to the first element equal to or greater than a given value in a sorted sequence. So similar to binary search, but instead of returning true or false, it's going to return you an iterator pointing to an element. So if there's an element equal in value to the element you're searching for, uh, it'll return you an iterator pointing to the first instance of uh, that element. And if it doesn't uh, exactly match, it'll return you the next greatest element compared to the value you're looking for. So I like to think of this function as uh, first equal to or greater than is essentially what lower bound means. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have a vector of integers initialized using an initializer list and note that we've got two threes here and then we have uh, three iterators uh, that are set using the lower bound function. So the first two parameters are iterators defining our range and then the third is the value we're looking for. So uh, the first iterator is going to point to uh, the first three. So it'll output three. Uh, and note that it's not, it's definitely not pointing to the second three. And we can verify that by uh, calling the distance function and seeing the distance between the first element and it, our first iterator. So that'll output one, not two. Uh, for our second iterator, uh, it's looking for four because there's no four here and our lower bound function is looking for the first equal to or greater than, it'll output five. And because there's no element equal to or greater than eight, uh, it will output not found. So we're looking at the definition of std lower bound. So if we switch this to upper bound, you can see that the only thing that's changed is that it's not equal to or greater than a given value. It's just greater than a given value. So I like to think of upper bound as first greater than. So taking a look at an example, we have the exact same code. Uh, the only difference is that instead of calling lower bound, we're calling upper bound. And you'll note that the only difference is that the first iterator is going to, or the first line here calling the first iterator is going to output five because it's now greater than, not equal to or greater than. So if you're searching for a value that doesn't exist in your uh, data structure, upper bound and lower bound are essentially equivalent. And I didn't show them in the examples, but lower bound and upper bound can have a fourth parameter uh, for a custom comparator as well. And if we wanted, we could define a custom fourth algorithm uh, to fill out our set of two. So we have first equal to or greater than, first greater than. So you could imagine we could also have a first less than, which we can define making one call to lower bound. And as long as the iterator we find is not equal to first, we can just decrement the iterator and return that. 
So taking a look at an example, the same one that we had before, uh, if we search for three, four, and eight, these will now return the numbers before them, one, three, and seven. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.